Now, Joe Biden has, for the first time, finally, after four years, acknowledged his seventh grandchild. This is little four-year-old Navy, who lives in my old hometown of Arkansas. Well, poor girl. I mean, I feel terribly sorry for her. Her mum has been taking care of her. She used to be a stripper. The father, Hunter, deadbeat dad, had to be taken to court just to provide some financial support. But, Gemma, what does it say that the president, what does it say about him that he had to be shamed into acknowledging his own granddaughter? I just think it's another layer of manure, frankly, on the Biden administration. But more broadly, what does it say about the American political media class and the, the, the you know, does the Democratic Party have no shame? Seriously, it's just... It, it, last... A couple of months ago, I was on a flight and I watched uh, all the president's men, Rita, and those of us who are of this vintage... Um, well, actually, I wasn't quite born yet. However, <laughs> I remember the story because I can read. But read <laughs> like like the, the Watergate scandal and reading about that and watching that movie and just being astounded by what went down and how it happened. And you know, d does does. <laughs> Does the office of the pre president not mean anything to these people? And, I, and maybe that sounds a bit naive, but I still believe that those who are elected to serve are elected to serve and not themselves and not their families and not their bank accounts. They work for us. And it doesn't seem to me that, 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 is, that there's any reflection of that, in, certainly in the US um, situation at the moment. And as for Biden, then surely, surely uh, the net is tightening, tightening around him whether or not it's his own decline in cognitive mm. health or whether it is the myriad of legal and uh, legal and political problems that he's digging himself or dug himself into just by sins of omission as much as commission. Well, he said he was going to restore decency and honour into the White House. What I don't that know if that's happened, Caroline, but the polls... <laughs> <laughs> the polls haven't been great. Uh, look, let's look at the latest CBS poll and it's a record low. 60% disapprove of Biden's overall job performance and 66% disapprove of his handling of the economy. Uh, is he going to be the candidate again, Caroline? Surely he can't be. Surely he can't be. And while those are very low approval and um, approval ratings, I reckon if you did the one of who would you prefer, Joe or Kamala, it'd be 95% in favour of Joe, which really doesn't say anything yeah. else much for the depth in the Democratic Party. Um, surely the operators and surely the strategic heads, the, the people within the Democratic Party who act, actually have political judgement can't let this man go uh, to the next election campaign. Because last time, sure, he could hide in his basement because we still had COVID and all that jazz. Um, but this time around, he will be expected to be out and about. And we know that the campaign trail is gruelling for the presidency. And I just can't see how he has got the cognitive ability or the stamina uh, to be able to go through that, plus another four-year term on the other side. I just don't see it. Now, back to local news. Hundreds of supporters have attended a sold-out Liberal Party fundraiser in Melbourne's western suburbs, headlined by expelled Victorian Liberal Moira Deeming. This comes a week after Deeming addressed the South Australian Liberal Women's Council AGM, where she received not one, but two standing ovations. Uh, Gemma, the, the Vic Liberal leader could only dream of having that sort of appeal. This is crazy to me that one of the most popular Liberals, possibly the most popular Liberal in Victoria, is banned by the Victorian Liberals. It's a special... It's a special group. <laughs> it's a special... Uh, a spe yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't... I'm trying to be... It's a family show, so I'm trying to keep it clean, but... You know, I, I think as an as a as a, I, I'm a conservative voter, that's going to shock absolutely nobody. And and my de demographic, 50 and lower, are uh, the women that deserted the coalition at the last state, uh, last federal election and state election subsequent. So, for me, it's actually not particularly surprising because you, you can slice it any which way you want. But what happened to Moira Deeming when I saw that story play out? All I saw was a bloke telling a woman to sit down and shut up. 
All I saw was a bloke telling a woman, mm. you will talk when we tell you you can talk and you'll talk about the things that we'll let you talk about. And I'm not even a feminist reader, but I tell you what, I've had it up to the back teeth with that. And I think the Liberal, the Liberal Party in Victoria, I'm far from the expert on it, but as a Conservative female voter that stands for smaller government and all of those things, a business owner for 20 years, all that kind of stuff. It doesn't surprise me that everyday Australians who don't care about factions, moderates, right, left, that sort of thing, they just want good government, honest government, probably want to be able to choose to have gas in their home as well, all of that sort of stuff. It doesn't surprise me <laughs> that they're gravitating towards really just boring common sense stuff like a woman can talk about being a woman and other women's stuff. Well, this was just such a massive own goal by mm -hmm. Jean Pesuto. Absolutely clueless in every way. I cannot believe he has survived to still be a leader. He, he's got this popular, courageous young woman who's gone along to a women's rights rally, was assaulted <clears throat> at that rally, both physically and verbally, and instead of standing with her... He condemns her. He yeah. makes all sorts of comments that, to me, seemed like defamatory. And he is now being sued by defamation by Maura Deeming. Ladies, Caroline De Rosso, Gemma Tognini, thank you so much for your time this evening.